What's up, everybody? Robbie Ramnerain again from Robbie Ram CPA. I'm Devin Ramnerain. Hey, guys. Today I'm going to be giving you your intro. <laughs> Surprise! Because we are talking about nutrition in the workplace. And what better person to talk about nutrition than a clinical nutritionist? Well, there is a factor, a huge factor, that affects your overall success in the workplace if you are obese. And that is, people automatically respect you less. Yeah. And it's not fair, but it is a fact. You are associated with being slower. You are associated with being, unfortunately, less intelligent. No matter how, you know, your credentials look, no matter what school you went to, mm -hmm. you're, you know, you can be a perfectly smart, smarter than everyone else person, and they just look at you a certain way. Yeah, almost like a liability. Um, and... You know, we can both speak from personal experiences in the corporate world as W-2 employees and now as business owners, obviously. Uh, we've done our very, very best to uh, create a schedule where we are in the gym, you know, three, four days a week. Maybe not working out as long as we want I to. but that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we, we sometimes it's five days a week. Um, we do have to kind of abbreviate our workouts. The point is we're, we're in there and we're doing, you know, all we can. Um, but we always, we didn't always look like this, neither of us. Right. Let's tell let's tell our stories. Why don't you go ahead? I mean, very quickly. I mean, obviously, I'm not in the greatest shape of my life, but I'm not in the worst shape either. You know, obviously, working, say, what, 70, 80 hours a week will kind of do that to you. But like we said, uh, we have done everything we possibly could to create gym time for ourselves. But it wasn't always like that. Um, you know, back in my days as a grad student at BC, and then right after that, I weighed over 270 pounds, which when you're just a tad over six feet tall is a lot. Uh, it was probably more than that. I think the scale went up to 270, so I said I weighed 270. But the point is, um, yeah, just getting respect on the job, getting into the job, getting the interview, I had to have the personality of, you know, 10 gregarious comedians or whatever it was to kind of get in there. And uh, obviously credentials took over after that. But the point is, uh, it was hard just day to day and sometimes hearing comments behind your back, sometimes to your face when people were drunk at a happy hour or whatever it was. It just, you know, not an easy time to be a corporate person. And obviously, you know, dealing with uh, not having your picture up in the office yeah, when everyone else was. That. Yeah, no, I, I saw that when I uh, moved on to Miami and... It was like, all right, you know what the hell with these guys? I'm going to lose all this weight, even though I was working those same 80, 90 hours a week in the whole public accounting realm. And it all worked out. I became a corporate runner when I was at Mercantile Commerce Bank in Miami and got very, very good um, at staying in shape. And um, obviously age has uh, kind of changed, you know, the ability to eat barrels of rice for lunch and that type of stuff uh like i used to uh the one I was but you kept it in you kept it in check because yeah. you realized the value in giving a certain corporate you know corporate appearance right absolutely and i've seen it as well you know i used to weigh 340 pounds i think i've mentioned that in a few of prior vlogs um i've lost 170 of that i've noticed that when I weighed 340 pounds, it was almost impossible for me to even get, like, the most basic entry-level job. Mm. I, I've, <laughs> I have literally posted an application with a receptionist, and as I was turning away, I saw her throw it in the garbage before mm. I even walked out the door. Right. Just because of the way I looked. And, I mean, no disrespect, but it was very entry-level. It wasn't something that you needed a degree for. I right. noticed... You know, after I lost some weight and was starting to see my symptoms go away from the pre-diabetes and pre-hypertension, and my confidence was regained, that was the big thing, I think. I suddenly had so much more respect from the public, and I hadn't gone back to school yet. You know, I had not changed anything other than my appearance. Is that fair? Is that fair? It's no. not. It's not. Not necessarily no, but I did see it, and I want to pass that on to you. If you're, you know, struggling with your weight, if you're interested in making a change, perhaps this might be something to consider. Right. I mean, it's the same thing, you know, in business. I mean, I've been, you know, to you know certain places, meeting with CFOs, CEOs, that sort of thing, and you see them wearing polo shirts that look like they haven't been to the gym and seven years and I mean man boobs bellies that type of stuff and it's like they don't look or feel 100% you can tell by the way they act and just 
you know, yeah, they're making the money and stuff, but they're miserable, and they know that no one respects them. It's, and it's, they've kind yeah. of settled off where they are in their career. They're not looking to move up anymore. Right. So that kind of tells you something right there. If they have let themselves go here, they're not planning on moving up. So what if you're just starting out? Right, exactly. So that's what it is. Now, why don't we talk a little more about how people can mitigate that? I mean, people work a lot of hours these days, but there are company initiatives that help people. Yeah, you want yeah. To talk about that? Of course. You know, there are point programs, especially mm -hmm. if you work at a hospital or something like that, where if you walk a certain amount of steps in a, in a day, for this many days, you can literally take your points and buy stuff like microwaves and mm -hmm. whatever. Um, there's there's company gyms. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You know there's with uh, trainers and everything. I mean, yes. it's crazy. Yeah. There are company marathons that you can get all kinds of you know good credibility for running in. It's great for your career too, especially if you're good. Great for networking. <laughs> great for networking. Yeah. Um, and it'll might put you in a paper. I mean, Robbie got put in a paper for that. A very, a very long time ago. <laughs> I mean, still, I mean, still, unfortunately, companies are going to look at you, if you're obese, as a liability because their insurance premiums are going to go up because of your conditions that mm -hmm. you're, you're very likely either have now or you're going to have in the future. Everyone always says, you know, well, I'm healthy now, you know, maybe I'll lose the weight when I get something. Once you get something like diabetes or heart failure, heart disease, it's too late. Yeah. You need to get on this now, not just for your career, but for yourself. Right, and for your families and that type of stuff. I mean, think of it this way. If it's hard to lose weight at 40, imagine how hard it is at 50. Yeah. yeah. It's hard at 26. I can't imagine, you know, waiting till I was 36. Yeah, no, forget it. You know, yeah, same. Uh, I lost a significant amount of weight at uh, 25, 26, and, you know, it's, it's, yeah. It was a challenge. It can be. It really yeah. can be. Um, I know that working crazy hours or going to college crazy hours is, well, crazy. It's a lot. And after that, all you really want to do is just sit there with, you know, half a pizza and watch Netflix or, or movies and just relax. But honestly, putting in even just 30 minutes, three days a week of exercise and just watching what you eat some making sure you get your vitamins will make such a difference not only in your self-esteem, your confidence, but in your business prospects. Yeah, and your work. I mean, you know, I can just speak as a former very obese guy and uh, someone who's in somewhat of a reasonable shape now that, you know, you think clear when you're in shape, when you go yeah. to the gym, there's something about, I'm not a doctor or anything Your like endorphins that, are released, yeah, so your, your stress is just... It just flies out of you, and you feel so... It's like you meditated, but you meditated and got skinnier. Right. <laughs> and for all of you, for those uh, Nova Southeastern University Division Two basketball guys who are watching this, you know, thank you guys very much for letting me run with you guys, you know, once or twice a month. You know, that right there, just basketball competitive sports. Yeah, it's a different kind of workout, sweating, and I go back into either my client's site or just dealing with my uh, non-corporate clients, or, you know, or uh, small business owner clients and whatnot. It's literally just, you come in with so much energy to those meetings, it's, yeah, it, it makes a difference. So, it makes a yeah. world of difference. And you know, thanks to Nova as well for letting me use their equipment. Thanks to Jillian Michaels for kicking my butt into shape at right. home. It's, it makes a difference, and there's more to it than just eating right and exercising. And if you're interested in looking into that in the future, you know my social media handles. I, you know, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I can help you with that. Um, obviously, as well. You know, we are a CPA firm, so if you're looking into any fitness write-offs, yeah. If you're a business owner and you need to know about what's deductible and what's not as far as your fitness endeavors, obviously reach out to us and we'll uh, point you in the right direction. That's right. We can help get you skinny and richer at the same time. <laughs> so for Devin Ramsarine, I'm Robbie Ramsarine. So long and we will see you guys next time. See you guys. Bye.